What's up everyone? It's Cody, um, back with another Kotlin tutorial. And today we are going to talk about scope functions. So in the last video we were talking about control flow and type checks. So let's just go on over to our project and we will create a new Kotlin file. And this one we are just going to call scope functions. And then I'll go ahead, close out of our control flow and type checks because we don't care about that anymore. Zoom in and we will say main, hit enter. And now we will do a print line to give our introduction to scope functions. So uh, within Kotlin, uh, the standard library contains several different functions um, where their sole purpose is to execute a block of code within the context of an object. So when you call such functions, um, these will invoke lambda expressions, which don't worry too much about what lambdas are. That's just kind of the inner workings of these scope functions. Um, and it forms this temporary scope. And so within that scope, you will be executing code within that class. And so there are a couple different ones. So Let's go ahead and get started with our first one. So um, for the first couple, we'll just use this scope functions variable, which I'll just say, hello, scope functions. And then we'll say val let, which is going to be our first uh, scope function. So we'll say scope functions dot let. And then when I hit enter, you'll notice that um, the IDE should highlight it to say it, and then um, this is saying what the context is. The context is a string, which is this scope function. So everything that we do within this um, is going to end up operating, will end up um, manipulating this scope functions string. So if I say, you know, it replace uh, the old value so every single space, if we want to replace it with a period, we can do that. And then if we do it reversed, let's say we just want to take the string and reverse it, um, it will do both of those operations on the context of this scope functions variable. Uh, so we'll do print line let, so our let variable, so the output of what this function is. So if you remember from our control flows video, um, pretty much everything in Kotlin is evaluated as an expression. And so that is why the, the very last thing that we evaluate here ends up being um, that value. So let's go ahead, do our print lines, and then go ahead and run our scope functions just to see what we get. So we have scope functions and then what is let, and then you can see that we replaced Ooh, so that one did not work. And I believe I see why. So um, the reason why is this one, uh, with, with strings, they are treated as immutable. So we manipulate the string twice, and it actually did what you would expect it to do. Um, but in order to actually do that, let's go ahead and get rid of this. So we're just going to do replace it, and then we're going to also reverse it. And then if we go ahead and run it, you will see it um, reverses it and then also adds those periods. So that is the let scope function. Uh, let's go ahead, let's talk about the uh, run scope function, which is pretty similar, but there is one, um, one difference. So with the let scope function, in order to access the, this scope functions variable, we had to call it. So with run, the context that you have is referenced by this. So we can say, um, let's go ahead, start off by saying print line, uh, what is run, just so we can easily see that in our output. And then we'll say this dot to uppercase, this dot remove prefix, uh, just to say remove hello and trim. Let's go ahead run that yeah. and we should probably first print out the uh, the output so print line for the run go ahead run that again so we get scope functions 
exclamation point. But again, uh, similar to the last one, because this to uppercase was invoked this way, um, and then we invoked it on this again, it did not keep all of that. So we will go ahead, we'll remove this because it actually ends up being optional in this case. And then we'll just join those two together, go ahead and run it again. And you'll see, so we did um, two uppercase, uh, actually removing the prefix um, of hello, since it is type safe, uh, we wanna make sure that we do that capitalized. So run that one more time, and then we'll have just scope functions being printed out. So that is the run scope function. Uh, the next one that we're gonna get into is the width scope function. And the unique thing about width is instead of calling it on the object or variable itself, you just say you use this width function, you pass in what you wanna run it on. And then from there, we'll just say print line, what is width? And then we can say, you know, drop five of them and then two byte array and then content to string. And then just to make sure that we uh, have that all chained together, um, we'll go ahead and just have drop dot two byte array dot to, uh, content to string. And we'll do print line width, and then we'll do another print line just to have that all spaced out and we'll run it again. And then you'll see over here, we have uh, our what is width. And then we transformed this into a byte array um, after we dropped the first five uh, characters and then just transformed it back into a string. So the the reason that you'd use a with operator actually usually comes in more when we are writing functions. So we haven't quite got there yet, but uh, in a future tutorial, we'll talk about what functions are uh, and we'll pull the width uh, scope function back into it. All right, so for these next couple of ones, we're going to talk about um, scope functions that allow you to build on objects. So this first one is going to be the apply. So what is apply? And we will go ahead and do val apply equals. And in this case, we're gonna use a mutable list of uh, ints. And the reason why is be for, um, for lists, you, you usually build on top of them, you add items to a list. Uh, once we talk about um, classes in Kotlin, the apply uh, scope function also comes in handy there, but just because we haven't talked about that yet, we'll keep it simple, just talk about um, a list. And so what we would do here is we would just say, like add one, add two, add three. And then again, we will do print line just to say apply dot to string and then print line again. So when we go ahead and run that, we'll have what is apply and then one, two, three. Um, this can also go within there um, and that's not a big deal. And really what this ends up saving us from doing would be something like this. So uh, we'll say like val without apply equals mutable list of int and then without apply dot add one without apply add two without apply add three. So instead of having to do that, you just call the apply function, everything is ran within the scope of this mutable list of, um, and it allows you just to do that without too much extra boilerplate code. So the last one we're gonna talk about is called the also scope function. So we'll say val also, also, <laughs> that was a very weird autocorrect, uh, and then we'll say mutable list of, and then we'll do int again, and then we'll say also. 
So this one, you get the context of it in this case. Uh, this ends up being useful when you want to do things that may not be directly on um, or directly within the this context. So we can do it add one, it add two. Um, but what we could also do is something like print line. This is a side effect thing. And then when we go ahead and do print line, also to string, print line again, and go ahead and run it. You can see uh, this is a side effect thing. So we have um, for our also, and then it'll print it out for us there. So also comes in handy when you get into doing logging and, and things like that, where you just want to say, do this, and then also do this in a slightly different context. So with that, those are the scope functions in Kotlin. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment below. If you enjoyed the video though, give it a like. Be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell if you want notifications, you know, whenever I release a new video. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.